Hey, hey, fellow YouTubers, JJ the Trucker coming to you from South Carolina with another You Ask, I Deliver video for you and another video in the How To series. All right, so I've had some people ask me about the fifth wheel slide. Why would you adjust the fifth wheel slide and how do you adjust the fifth wheel slide? Well, let's go ahead and get right into it, shall we? All right, let's take a look here. So let's talk about this fifth wheel slide. Right there, that piece right there is the fifth wheel, in case you didn't know it. And you can see right here, these little notches, two, three, four, five, six notches. That allows you to slide the fifth wheel either back or forward, okay, to an extent. Now, right now we are in the fourth hole. You can see one, two, three, four. There's my pin right there. Okay, we are in the fourth hole. Uh, this has a stop on it to where I can, you know, we cannot move it back any further than the fourth hole. So fifth and sixth hole, uh, let's pretend those don't exist. All right, so we can move it forward and backwards, but why would we want to do that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one is weight distribution. Just like sliding the, the tandems in the back. Uh, helps with the weight distribution. Uh, consider this uh, this whole thing like a this whole trailer like a, a teeter-totter if you will Wherever the uh, points of contact are is going to determine where the weight distributes. Okay, same thing with this but not to a rate of of a deal as the rear tandems okay? however the further back that way the fifth wheel is the more weight is going to be on these drive tires right here and less weight on the steer tires. Not by a lot, but just by a little and sometimes that's the difference it makes. You move them forward, move that fifth wheel forward, zoom back uh, out here, and you move it forward and you're doing just the opposite. You're putting more weight on the steer tires, a little bit less weight on these drive tires. Okay, so that's one reason. The other reason is for turning and cornering, okay, uh, as well as space, okay? You see with the all the way back, I've got lots of space on this catwalk. Uh, let's compare it to where the, uh, the mud flap tops are and where the trailer uh, bulkhead is right here. We've got some space, a lot of extra space, uh, which is fine. You can get some extra turning out of that before your trailer actually jackknives, which is good. However, the problem I'm having and why I'm going to be adjusting it is this hose right here. If you saw one of my previous videos, uh, I tried to make a U-turn, didn't even get the trailer jackknifed, and I ended up breaking my seven pole. So that wasn't good. Uh, and just now, uh, even after just replacing this, I had to make another U-turn in a, in a kind of a tight area, had to jackknife it. I got out and took a look at this thing, and this cable was stretched to the max it was bad and i still wasn't even jackknife so i'm gonna go ahead and push this thing up so that i get a little bit more slack on this cable and i think i'm still going to be able to get uh, a good turning radius out of this uh be able to by being able to jackknife this thing a little bit more uh so i think that's actually going to help me out all right so let me show you how in the world we're going to do this all right first things first uh, you got to keep in mind every truck is different. This is a 2021 Peterbilt 579 and it's got a, uh, a switch inside the uh, inside the cab that Takes care of this pin. It's all done by by air pressure When I flip that switch that locking pin on this side and on the other side will go in all right uh, some trucks don't have that so you'll definitely want to make sure to Refer to your manufacturer's specifications on how to get that pin unlocked. Uh, the rest of the steps should be pretty much the same though, all right? Okay, let's get to it. First thing we want to do is we want to take pressure off of this fifth wheel plate, okay? Right now, there's a lot of weight on this plate, which is pushing down on the sliding mechanism, okay? We need to take pressure off of that or else this thing is not going to slide easily. It's going to be very, you know, bumpy and jerky and... And, and may not uh, may not uh, do very well. All right, so let's go ahead and lower the landing gear. Let's go ahead and lower this landing gear. All 
right, now if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I usually stop either right about here or a little bit higher up. However, our intention right now is to actually raise the trailer up just a little bit in order to uh, relieve the pressure off of that fifth, uh, fifth wheel, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and crank. I know I'm cranking the wrong way. You hear that? That's the air from the, uh, from the suspension the airbags, and we want to hear that air coming off, uh, coming out. That lets us know that we have released a little bit of that uh, of that weight and that pressure off the fifth wheel. So that is about where we'll leave it. Next, okay. we're going to go ahead and start up the truck, and right over here, this right here is the button that I'm talking about, and you can see. It actually shows the fifth wheel sliding back and forth. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And I just heard them click, so let's go ahead and get out and check. I always wanna go out and check these pins. And you can see that pin has retracted on this side. Now let's go ahead and go to the other side and verify that it's done it there. And there you go, that pin is retracted. Now sometimes they will not retract right away. If they don't, kind of like when you're sliding your tandems, you may have to jimmy the truck back and forth a little bit, but it should not be a lot. Okay? If, it, if you are jimmying this thing back and forth a lot, you may want to lower the landing gear just a little bit more, take a little bit more pressure off of it. All right, so there we go, the pins are unlocked. What do we do next? We're gonna go ahead and get in the truck and move the truck backward. All right, so remember, if we move the truck backward, the fifth wheel is now gonna stay in place because we do have the trailer brakes set. Okay, that's very, very important. Make sure you are setting your trailer brakes to do this. Okay, so the fifth wheel is going to stay in place because it is attached now to the trailer. We're gonna move the truck backwards which is going to slide the whole assembly that way. All right, check it out. Now that that has been done, I'm going to go ahead and uh, right now both my brakes are on, the tractor and the trailer brakes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that uh, that fifth wheel switch once again, which should push the pins out, and then I'll need to move the truck back and forward just a little bit in, to, in order to make sure that those pins really pop into place. There we go, the pin is in place on that side. Let's go ahead and check the other side just to make sure. And there you have it, you see the pin right in there. It is in. You guys wanna see that from a different angle? Yeah, check this out. Now that we got the fifth wheel moved up, there's one more important thing that you need to remember or at least keep an eye out for. These cables right here, if you've got uh, not the, the coiled ones, but if you've got the other uh, ones like this, you need to make sure that they are not 
resting on the catwalk. That is a DOT violation that will get you written up. Uh, so just make sure as you're doing this, you know, straighten out the trailer. Um, and then it's it's real simple to do. I'm not even going to show you how to do it. Uh, I'm not even going to show you me doing it. All you do is loosen up that right there. Uh, for a Peterbilt, it's an 11 millimeter. Uh, just uh, loosen that up. Pull the, the hose. Uh, the hoses and the, uh, the cable through to uh, tighten it up but you don't want to do it too much those uh, springs are, are pretty tight there you want to do it to where this is just hovering a little bit above not very much at all and that is it so uh, let me go ahead and get that done and I'll show you the uh, after right, I went ahead and got it moved you can kind of see where the old bend was over there I just moved it from about there to there uh, you definitely want to clamp it down all the way. Get it as tight as you can, or else this thing will move on you. Uh, you also see that uh, that clamp was right there, down here. I went ahead and moved it on up there. So this is how far I've got it off of the catwalk now. Uh, so as it's swinging and everything, um, if I push down on it a little bit, it'll still hit. So, uh, but that's about it. So as it's swinging by, it is just going to miss uh, so that'll be good plus that bend you can kind of see where the old bend was right over there and so this hasn't quite settled in yet uh, with the new bend the hoses are still a little on the stiff side so once that settles in I think this will drop just a smidge more and it'll probably be perfect but I'll definitely want to check that in a uh, day or two just to make sure we are still good it's that simple folks that's it there's nothing to be afraid of or worried about when it comes to sliding your fifth wheel it is super easy as you just saw all right everybody if you haven't subscribed to my videos yet please i would appreciate a subscribe and a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content if it helped you out please share it as well to subscribe it's going to be easy just click on my face click on my face you see it right there click on my face click on it click on it and be sure to check out my other videos right about there Take care.